But among these, these seven states from which we had fake electors, it's a lot of fake electors, right? I mean, 16 of them already charged in Michigan, more of them being investigated as we speak, at least in Arizona and in Georgia, maybe in other places as well. It's a good reminder that in all these investigations that we are following around particularly the efforts to overthrow the results of the 2020 election, it's not just former President Donald Trump who's in the crosshairs. For example, in special counsel Jack Smith's classified documents case, charges have, of course, already been brought against Trump and also his staffer, Walt Nauda. But we also have reporting that another Trump Organization employee has been told that they're the target of that investigation and could face additional criminal charges. Again, so an, yet another person could be charged in the classified documents case. A person has been warned of charges, effectively given a target letter in that case. And while we have yet to see any charges in the January 6th case, in the overturning the election part of the case, one of the statutes reportedly listed in the target letter that Trump has received on that um, is conspiracy. And if there's one thing we know about conspiracy charges, it's that a person cannot conspire alone. Are there more names to drop? And, and what would that mean for the likely progress of these cases? Joining us now is Chuck Rosenberg. He's a former U.S. attorney and senior FBI official. If Trump is charged with conspiracy, and again, we should say we mm -hmm. have reporting about what's in his target letter, even if we had definitive knowledge of what was in the target letter, there's no guarantee that what's in the target letter is mm -hmm. indicative that charges will be brought or that the charges that will be brought are those that are related to uh, the statutes mentioned in the target letter. I have to give you all the caveats. But it, it, with all those caveats, if Trump is charged with conspiracy, there's no guarantee that his, conspira his conspirators, people he conspired with, would be charged under the same indictment or indeed charged at all, right? That's exactly right. One can be an unindicted co-conspirator. In fact, if you think back to Michael Cohn's charges in the Southern District of New York, Cohn, of course, Mr. Trump's former personal lawyer, in that indictment, we learned about an unindicted co-conspirator. Individual one is how the government described that person in the indictment, and that turned out to be Mr. Trump himself. You know, charging a case as a conspiracy confers on the government certain evidentiary advantages. I'm not going to bore you with those now. So it makes sense often to charge a conspiracy. And often when you charge a conspiracy, you have multiple defendants at trial. But to your point, Rachel, you're exactly right. You don't have to. You can have unindicted co-conspirators um, that are flagged by the grand jury and mentioned in the indictment, but not sitting next to the defendant, perhaps Mr. Trump, at his own criminal trial. Chuck, I have to ask you, I can't let you go without asking you one last question, which is the question on everybody's mind in the news business this week, uh, which is um, what our expectations should reasonably, reasonably be about the relationship between that reported target letter and any indictment and any unsealing of an indictment against Trump if one yeah. is in fact coming. Yeah, uh, another great question. Well, when I was a federal prosecutor, I would occasionally send out target letters. Um, I would never send out a target letter to somebody that I did not intend to inv indict. They're not bluffs. They're not games. They're not make-believe. So here's what you ought to expect. If Mr. Trump really did receive a target letter, then he will be charged with federal crimes. If he really received a target letter, that will happen relatively soon. Now, to your points earlier, your caveats are wise. Target letters are not contracts, and the government could change its mind. But in my experience, that would be unusual. What you should expect is a federal indictment of Mr. Trump and a federal indictment soon.